My name is Agnes Ruoro. I'm a leadership faculty at Strathmore Business School and I'm a certified coach and I also specialize in self-improvement advisory. So three tips to drive productivity. One, evaluate. Two, eliminate. And three, delegate. But what does it really mean to evaluate? It's being able to assess your high value tasks in your job and the low value tasks. And you will look at uh, two elements that can help you to really evaluate what is high value and what is low value. What are the strategic aspects of your job? Those will be your mission critical because they are very important to the organizational goal. And there will be the operational aspect of your job. Many times, yes, they are important, but they are not mission critical. So you can look at uh, your operational aspects from uh, the perspective of what is a time waster in my job. A time waster could be a situation where you're spending a lot of time in organizational activities. Let's say WhatsApp. Many organizations have groups across the organization, but you could spend so much time on those WhatsApp groups getting updates about what is happening, but you're not really producing anything out of them. So that could be a time waster. The other element is time consumers. They are those repetitive tasks in your role. They are key to the business. They take so much time, they take a lot of effort. For example, if you look at reports, how much time do you spend on reports? You, and you can't eliminate them, you can't do away with them because they're important, they are used by your senior management. But you can be able to reduce the time that you're taking on reports. And then the other thing is to also look at the productivity stoppers. A productivity stopper could be something like an approval that is required for you to proceed to the next level because it will naturally slow you down or bring your productivity to a halt as you wait. And that makes you waste time. So when you evaluate, then you can clearly see what is easy to eliminate. So the second tip, eliminate. By filtering, you start to filter and prioritizing what is mission critical, what is important and what is not important. If something comes into the box of not important, you've got to be very ruthless to have the courage to remove them from your list because they are not important. But that's actually the hard, one of the hardest things uh, for managers, to feel comfortable when it is not in their list. How do you know what you should remove and what you should not remove? The first, uh, an example is to say no to meetings. Because there are very many meetings, discern which ones are important and which ones are less important and say no to some of them. The other element is to automate. In one of the easiest way to eliminate tasks from your role is to automate them. And there are several benefits of automating. One, because you offload work and create time in your hands. And the other thing is that those activities will continue to run in the background. So they are not coming to a stop. They are going to continue running in the background while you focus on more important things in your, in your role. And um, of course, automating means you have to maybe relook your investment decisions. You might have to invest in systems that are not there. But as a manager, those are some of the things you should be thinking about because if you don't, nobody else will think about it. Then the, um, the, what I have seen is that there are some things that cannot be automated. So what do you do with them? And that takes me to the third tip, which is to delegate. You see, if you can't automate it, you can delegate it perhaps. And that uh, to delegate basically means giving more of the work to your team to do it. But it doesn't necessarily mean dumping what you don't like. It, 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 it's a hard balance. You know, what don't you like? What are you good at and what are you passionate about? You need to evaluate your team and check who can do what. What is their level of competence and what is their level of interest in that which you want to delegate. But uh, even when you check their competency and their level of interest, that is not enough. You also need to evaluate their willingness to take on those responsibilities so that you're sure that when you delegate them, they get done and they get done to perfection.